Coming up, VW. I've never called him that. Or Tall Mark. I have called him that. Tall Mark VW Vanderwerp from Rose Pest Solutions, the manager of education and training for Rose Pest Solutions, the oldest pest management company in the United States, founded in 1860. And he is here to answer all of your pest questions questions not just mosquitoes not just ticks but we're talking all kinds of little things that you might find in your yard rodents and other stuff they help with all of that and all of the advice now that you're about to get is absolutely free a service of the paul w smith show for this entire hour so be a part of it but line up now call right now our wjr toll free number 800 859 800 859 Zero WJR, if you have any pest problems, questions, things you've always wondered about, we have an expert here right before us who will be taking your questions and calls. Mark Vanderwerp from Rose Pest Solutions, backed by popular demand. Call us at 800-859-0957, 800-859-0WJR. Still at to 55 degrees, but it is clearing up a little bit out there, which is certainly good news to hit the 80s. What do you say, 86 later today? Come on! That's amazing. We'll see. And it also probably is uh, playing right into the bugs, flies, mosquitoes, ticks, all those nefarious characters. It, it, we're playing right into it because of the weather. And because of that, by popular demand, Mark Vanderwerp is here from Rose Pest Solutions. Yep, he's one of the pros from Rose. I always say you should call. Mark, nice to see you. Hey, Paul, great to be here. Tis the season, isn't it? It is. You know, spring is a great time to know an entomologist because it's all going on out there. And uh, life kind of wakes up and gets going. And uh, it's amazing what you see. I was, I was doing a little work on my deck over the weekend mm -hmm. and, uh, and I pulled a couple of boards up. And holy cow, I found two ant colonies just by pulling a couple of boards off my deck. It's they, amazing. They don't know who they're dealing with, do they, at your house? Apparently they were safe until I, until I did that. So they were, uh, they were just doing their thing. Would these be carpenter ants? Uh, one, one was carpenter ants and one was odorous house ants. So two, different, two very different ants living in two very different little niches right there in my deck. That right I was walking so over. It can happen to anybody, including a guy who graduated with a bachelor's degree in etymology from Michigan State University who was then instilled with the giddy willingness of someone ready to dive headlong into a career in urban pest management. Now board-certified etymologist, board member of the Michigan Etymological Society, or MES, and a certified pesticide applicator in Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio. Also happens to be an accomplished insect macro photographer, and he's taking your calls right now at 800-859-0957, 800, 859 -0957, 800 8590 WJR without further ado because your time is especially tight in the morning. I know we get right to Lori in Rockwood on the Paul W. Smith Show at WJR. Good morning, Lori. Good morning. Um, I have a question about ticks. I found a tick on my dog last night and I'm wondering what kind of application do they apply in the yard or um, that it protects against the ticks? And how often do you have to have it um, reapplied? Tom Mark? Uh, good question. Well, first off, uh, congratulations. Believe it or not, you did an amazing thing. If you can find a tick on a dog, that's, it's like, where's Waldo? I mean, for very fuzzy animals with very little animals on them. It's, it's incredible. Good um, job, Lori. <laughs> so, Thank you. So, so pat yourself on the back for that. But, yeah, as far as treating them, so the first question is, where did the dog pick up the tick? So if you're like many dog owners, you walk the dog periodically, and especially if you go on any wooded trails, that kind of thing, that may be where the tick came from. So you may not need to treat the yard at all. If you know there's ticks in the yard, that's a different story. Uh, and then that's the kind of thing where you would do periodic treatments. It's going to depend what species of tick you have. Um, probably the American dog tick, because it's a good-sized tick, and people notice it, and it's pretty common. Um, the, the good news is that's not a terribly dangerous tick. It's not the one that gives you Lyme. It can carry some other nasty things, but they're, they're pretty, pretty rare um, 
diseases that that one carries. Quick question. Uh, the the home mosquito treatments I talked about in a commercial just a few minutes ago, three services for only $80 each. Do those, do those mosquito treatments kill ticks too? Yeah, so mosquitoes and ticks, you know, there's, there's not a real great targeted treatment for those. You kind of treat the foliage that they rest on, and so... Tick treatments and mosquito treatments look very similar. And yes, if you do one, you're kind of doing the other. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a great bang for your buck. You can kill two of the most uh, dangerous creatures in your backyard with one go. Lori, good job finding that on your dog. You're a, you're a good mommy to the dog. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Ron is in Sylvania, Ohio on WJR. Sylvania, home of... Well, he was there. I can, I can hear him leaving. A home of the Marathon Classic, the LPGA Classic, and we'll be broadcasting from there again this year. In Pontiac, uh, we have Phoenix or Phoenix. 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 Nice to have you here from Pontiac. Phoenix, what's your question for Mark Vanderwerp of Rose? I have moths in the house, and I only see like one, one or two. I don't know where they're... I don't have any standing water in the sink or anything like that, but I can't seem to get rid of them. You may very well be be breeding them. Um, so there's there's um, there's a couple of different moths. Is there any money in that breeding moths? I, I'm sure there's someone somewhere making money on it. Okay, just but, wanted to check. But uh, I haven't figured out how. Okay, uh, we get rid of them, and that works too for making money. Um, but no, it's it's probably either a, a stored product moth, so something munching on some of your goods in your pantry, like like pastas or cereals or other dried goods, or it's a type of clothes moth, and it's feeding on rugs or uh, your your favorite fancy uh, sweater. Um, so the, the two very different lifestyles you're potentially looking for. So the first step is really, what kind of moth is this? And that's the kind of thing, if you don't know, um, you can do Google searches, or you can always call a professional, because we like train our people to do this stuff. To look at them and say, this is what it is, and this yeah. is what we need to do. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, so catch one and save it, and then call. Then yeah. they can identify it for Sure. Them. I yeah. think that makes good sense. That makes a lot of sense. you got to know what you're dealing with if you want to get rid of it. All right, okay. Phoenix. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your uh, question, and uh, we're taking a heck of a lot more, too, at our WJR toll-free number. When you hear someone hang up, you know a line is open at 800-859-0957. That's 800-859-0WJR. We've got a pro from Rose on the Paul W. Smith Show. Mark Vanderwerp at your service here on WJR at 822. Go to Sam in Shelby Township. You're on the Paul W. Smith Show at WJR with a prose from Rose. Mark Vanderwerp, what's on your mind, Sam? Hey, good morning. We went, uh, we, we bought a new house last year, and this is going to be our first spring and summer at the house. We've got a bunch of trees in the back uh, yard. There's a park back there, and we have a graduation party. What, uh, what kind of protection can we do and make sure that our mosquitoes are controlled? Hey, hey, Sam, congrats on the, uh, the new house. Um, yeah, so this is a pretty common request is graduation parties or, or other outdoor events, and the mosquitoes are tearing people up. What can you do? Um, you can, you can, we, what we like to do is called barrier treatment, and we treat some of the foliage around the property. Uh, mosquitoes are re really weak flyers, so they like to take lots of breaks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you, 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 you spray... Uh, mosquito rest areas? Exactly. That's, oh that's what you do. Who would have guessed? So it's not like they're flying around 24-7 and just as soon as someone comes outside, they dart in and go for the kill. No, they're sitting on your bush before you come outside. So if we treat, treat your bushes, um, they sit on the bush and then they fall off the bush dead before you come outside and feed them. So that seems so that's simple enough, yeah. Sam, doesn't it? It sounds good to me. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to call the pros from Rose and do something before a graduation party in our backyard. And you don't have to do it like a lot of people call and say, can we do that to two hours before the party? Uh, you don't have to do that because it lasts 20 to 30 days. So maybe a week before is a good idea. Right. Yeah. It, it, usually scheduling should not be a last minute. Let's do this now today kind of thing. It's um, it's going to last for, for a period of time. So it's a residual material that we use. And uh, so, yeah, if you want to get the most bang for your buck, do it, a, do it a few days before the event. And uh, then when you're setting up and the caterers are coming out, they're not getting bitten either. They'll appreciate that. <laughs> Very good. good. Good luck, Sam, and happy graduation. Thanks for uh, waking up, listening with us all day long here on W. All righty, we have a pro from Rose. Uh, Mark Vanderwerp is here, affectionately known as VW, as in Vanderwerp, uh, or Tallmark, as is, how tall are you? 
six six. Uh, Mr. Burkhart, how, how tall are you? I'm about six eight. Are you six eight? Yeah. Okay. Well, I thought we finally found somebody taller than Rick Burkhart. <laughs> oh no, not even this. not even close. <laughs> he's he's a freak. Six, I'm eight. I'm pretty normal. <laughs> yeah, six six is normal. <laughs> Oh boy, six eight and six six. I used to be considered tall. Uh, anyway, <laughs> at, at six foot, uh, I'm not so tall anymore. I need your calls, and uh, as one hangs up, that means you call because all the lines are full. But we want you to ask your question here. We need to talk about ants, uh, carpenter bees, mosquitoes, ticks, and anything that's on your mind. At eight hundred eight five nine zero nine five seven eight hundred eight five nine zero WJR. Our WJR toll-free number. And it's uh, Cecilia in Waterford wants to talk about some flies in the attic. Good morning, Cecilia. Welcome to the Paul W. Smith Show, WJR. Good morning, gentlemen. Morning. I have a question about the flies in the attic. As soon as the weather warms up, they start to come out of the attic and into the house. They're just sluggish and lazy. But... We've never really known what to do with them because we have cats in the house and we don't want to do anything that would harm them. That makes hey, sense. People absolutely. who have pets, they're concerned about their uh, beloved pets. What do you suggest to Cecilia and anyone else with these kinds of problems? So uh, um, let me just take a quick opportunity to note that uh, essentially almost all pesticide treatments these days are, are very low risk to humans and pets. Obviously, we would not be in business uh, if we were in the uh, the regular habit of offing people's pets. We don't do that. So, so you can absolutely do fly treatments and, what a sensitive and not way harm to, pets. What a sensitive way to put that, Mark. Is, well, You've been I, in business 150, 160 years. They don't want to off your pets, we Cecilia. Don't. No, that is not what Rose is all about. Um, on a serious note, the flies you're probably seeing are called cluster flies. That's one possibility. And what they do is they like to overwinter in houses, in clusters. So they form these big aggregations. Uh, it, it's not a pest fly in the sense that they don't feed on garbage. They actually are parasites of earthworms out in your yard. So if you have a normal healthy yard, you probably have some of these flies around. Uh, but they come in the wintertime and then, you know, they head out in the spring and if they get kind of confused and head out the wrong way, they may end out in, in your living space. So the way to deal with that is to actually do some treatments on the outside of the structure in the fall, which is when they come into the structure. So so put that on your calendar. Call uh, call Rose in August or, or September and, uh, and and see if we can help you out. Now, another okay, quick call. Another another quick possibility is you had something that perished in the attic. Yeah. So that does happen if you've if you've seen a mice. A bat, maybe a bat in the belfry. A bat in the belfry, or yeah, a mouse in the house. Um, and, and of course that's well, that gonna... could. I can tell you that we've been in this house for a long time, and we plugged in one of those electronic pest control things because we used to hear scratching in the attic, and we don't hear that anymore. Yeah. So I guess that's a possibility. Well, so if if you plug in one of these ultrasonic repellers, which I really think they should be called silent noisemakers, which is just a confusing term because they're kind of confusing devices. The, 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 it's, the, it's the not pests clear what usually, they do. The pests usually die of old age when you plug one of those in. Well, yeah, so it's it's not killing anything if it's if it's doing anything, which is unclear. Um, so that probably wouldn't have. Although if you plugged it in, it means uh, you know. There were pests, so yeah. Good don't. luck to you, Cecilia. Thanks for the call. Len is in Canton, and black ants in the house, and you've got Mark Vanderwerp of Rose, Len. Hi, I uh, thank you for taking my call this morning. Appreciate it. And uh, the issue is with the black ants, and I call them fast movers because they scurry around pretty quick. Uh, I found them in the kitchen. They're in the uh, they were in the dishwasher under the sink uh, on the counter. So I'm kind of concerned. I've tried different baits. And they spraying around the perimeter of the house. But uh, any other ideas? Uh, well, you know, sometimes spraying around the perimeter of the house can be the wrong move for ants. Um, sometimes it'll actually cut the ants off, so you start seeing more of them in the house after you treat around the outside. Hmm. That, that that can happen. So that may have be, be what's going on. Huh. Uh, but there's a again, it really it really makes a difference what kind of ant we're talking about. And uh, un unfortunately, black ants could be a number of different species. Uh, but it sounds like you're doing. Stick with the baits, and eventually, uh, if if they're eating them, they will go away. Should I should I leave them alone if I see them um, motoring around, or should I just squish them and get rid of them? 
that's a great point you bring up. So it's a it's a common misconception of people to bust out the can of raid or or the you know washcloth and just destroy what they see. And oh, I'll show you ants. Uh, really, yeah, it's a it's a it's a best practice to leave them be if you're trying to use baits because they have to be able to walk back and forth to the bait yeah. and bring oh, it back home. Oh, that's a good point. You want them to take that bait back home. Yeah. So some people combine like the can of raid and the baits, which just that doesn't work. You gotta you gotta let them feed on the baits and take it back. All right, Lynn. Good luck to you. All righty. Thank you. Uh, he's got ants in the house, but no word of any ants in the pants, which is certainly good news. Get back to your, call. your calls right now with a pro from Rhodes. Mark Vanderwerp, a fine Michigan State grad, by the way, etymologist, certified. And taking your calls at 800-859-0957, 800-859-0WJR. Let's go with uh, Steve from the Golden Tower of the Fisher Building. Steve, you're on the air. Yeah, hi. Uh, first-time caller there, Paul. Love the show. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Mark, just want to say I, I, I utilized the pros from Rose about a month ago. Had a very heavy black ant problem at the Courtney abode. And uh, Mark, the technician, came out, uh, put down an application. He said, two weeks, uh, you should see an improvement. Uh, I did. A uh, couple more, uh, he came back out and put down some bait, and uh, it is absolutely clear. As a matter of fact, I'm uh, seeing some uh, ant residue of the, de uh, of the dead variety uh, outdoors right now, so I guess that's a good sign. Fantastic. Well, I think the moral of that story is we only hire people with the name of Mark. Apparently, yeah, yeah I was saying uh, uh, this now? is Mark. We keep so. it easy. That's easy to know that if you're going to call, it's going to be Mark. Well, way to go. Well, apparently, uh, thanks for you sharing your, uh, your personal care of the experience. And situation, you're on the mark. And by the way, <laughs> if there are empty beer cans in your house, uh, you should probably dispose of those properly. Rinse them out before you put them in the recycle or return them to the store if you're going to have them stored there. See that, Mark? That's how, that's how uh, rumors get started. Yeah, Miller Lite. Uh, all right, thank you, Steve, for, yeah. for your call. <laughs> First time caller, 8 to 49. Back to the real callers here, but a quick question about bees, because I know you want to talk about it, and there's been this worry about a shortage of bees, bee viruses, bee problems, B12 vitamins. What is it, the latest on bees and carpenter bees? So, man, there's a lot to talk about. I'm going to try to keep it quick, even though I'm really bad at that. Um, we like bees. Bees are great. They right, pollinate right. things. They make seeds. They make fruits. Um, really, really important species to, to coexist with. Uh, so there's a couple things. Most of the time, bees are not pest issues. Usually, the things people call bees are, in fact, yellow jackets or, or other wasps that really do often build build nests on houses. And For that, the average person, if it stings, we don't really care what we call it. We just want to get rid of it. Right. Well, but this is this is the crux of the issue. So people are saying, oh, there's a problem with bees. And then other people say, no, they build nests on my house every year. Well, we're talking about different things. Um, so there are a, a lot of bees in Michigan, and really there's only a couple of them, two, literally about two species that you'll ever run into that cause problems. So carpenter bees are one of those. And they are going uh, great guns right now. They usually get started late April, early May. So this is kind of their peak season where they're drilling into wood. So that is one to keep an eye out for, and that is absolutely one uh, we, we do lots of treatments for. Um, but uh, And the other one that can sometimes be a problem is honeybees. If honeybees get in the wrong spot, that's a, it's a problem. And so we've actually done some, some live colony removals from people's walls and, mm. and relocated them. Mm -hmm. What a nice thing to do for the bees. Yes, it is. And you do this free of charge. The bees are not charged uh, anything to, uh, to have themselves relocated. Well, I sometimes take a bite of honey because, hey, All right, well, it's, it's right you, there. I think you deserve it. The one thing you, you, what you don't want to do is irritate a bee. You don't want to irritate the bees. Most bees are so nice, you can't irritate okay. them. Okay, all right, you said it. Joy in Highland, there we go. Joy, uh, welcome to WJR. Uh, good morning. Thank you for taking my call. Sure, good morning. Um, my, I, I had a question. What are some of the procedures you would do to take care of carpenter ants? Sure. Well, you know, every situation is unique. So it's going to depend on, you know, the structure, where they're being found, what they're getting into. But as a general rule of thumb, some of the things you try to do to, to get rid of an ant problem are going to be to limit their food sources, um, which for carpenter ants can sometimes include things like dog dishes and bird feeders, uh, among other things. Um, and, and typically we'll use, a, uh, use some baits uh, in the areas that are active and sometimes supplement that with some, some non-repellent liquids um, to, to speed the process. So that's, that's, kind of the, uh, that's kind of the process. 
But, you know, it, if you find the colony, it's totally different. You can control a colony of carpenter ants with a vacuum cleaner if you know where they are. Uh, mm. So mm. it's uh, it's all about what, what you see and what you can find. Good luck to you, Joy. And that is in Troy. And that's got roly-poly bugs? <laughs> yes. I, I don't really know what, what to call them. I mean, uh, I think I, I've i heard them called potato bugs also. Does that sound familiar, Mark? Oh, they have many, many names. Um, I'm good with potato bugs, roly-polies, or pill bugs, sure. So you're well, getting them- I've got them in the house, and I don't know where they're coming from. They're obviously coming in from outside, so how do I keep them out? So this is an animal that is actually an on-land crustacean. So think lobsters, crabs, crustaceans. Wow. This is, a, this is a member of that clan. They are really sensitive to drying out. So they need high moisture area. So typically if you get them in a structure, it's in a basement uh, or in an area where there is a, a water leak or other moisture problem. Um, so so the, the key often is nothing in the house. It's often what's going on around. So, so check when you have a nice big rainstorm. Go outside with the umbrella, take a walk around the house, see if you see any water piling up next to the, next to the foundation. It may be a simple matter of uh, redirecting some downspouts uh, or thinning out some mulch, which is too thick and wet, uh, to, to resolve the issue. All right, Annette, good luck to you. Bonus, Mark Vanderwerp is going to continue taking your calls off air. So stay on the line, and you can continue to call. Meanwhile, you have a website for Rose that you invite photographs to, right? Sure. So we do have a, a website, rosepestsolutions.com. We also have a Facebook page, Rose Pest Solutions, that you can upload your, your crazy uh, insect or pest photos to, and we can see if we can give you a little advice that way as well. Rosepestsolutions.com and Facebook. Yes. And you take those photographs, uh, people have questions, take the photographs of your bugs and problems and share it with the entire Rose community. And the world at large, really, yeah. Let's get it out there. This is getting bigger than I ever could have guessed. Well, VW, Tall Mark, always a pleasure. It's been great, VW. It's not, I'm not used to a pro from Rose, you know what I mean? It's hard because I'm, you know, an old dog. New, pros from Rose is what I'm used to saying. But you're a pro from Rose at rosepestsolutions.com uh, or 800-966-ROSE, 800-966-ROSE.